I'd love to start by asking you how you conceptualize change for people who are not living and breathing it like you and I and obviously others in the field are and particularly when you're talking about not just what's happening today that people can see that's maybe more comfortable but the third and fourth order changes that you were mentioning there how do you make it real? I think when you work in strategic foresight you you start getting used to people going what what do you Exactly. <laughs> and then when you try to explain, their eyes roll back into their head and they get a little bit bored. So there's something really interesting about the endeavour of looking outside and looking at the horizon and, and trying to kind of understand that in a world of uncertainty, the future is going to be different to today. But that's a huge opportunity as well as requiring us to kind of think quite differently about what we're doing. As an organisation, it means constant, you know, challenging of our assumptions. And I think one of the ways that I therefore kind of talk about our endeavour, which is this process of looking at the future, is that you can compare, there's two kind of traditions, I think, in our, in our field, which is all about, you know, looking at, at the future to, to make better things possible today. And one of them is as if it's it's a crystal ball that what you're trying to do is you're measuring the, the drivers of change around you. You're kind of trying to predict technology. And this can be an endeavor that you're more or less right about. You know, this is Philip Tetlock's book on super forecasting. You know, to what extent are you correct at doing this? And or you can see the endeavor of, of thinking about the future as being like a mirror where what you're doing is you're exploring the world around you, tapping into the insight from William Gibson's quote, which is that the future is already here, it's just unevenly distributed. 